I can't tell you the number of times I've made this cake. It must be in the hundreds. I've made it where I've worked. Everyone who tries this loves this. This is my recipe. <laughs> And it comes from the Food Network. I do things a little differently. And one of the things I do which just takes it to the next level is I finish it with a caramel frosting. It will take you five minutes to make this cake. Seriously, it's probably the easiest cake I know. And this is how I do it. Into a bowl, crack two eggs. Then add three quarters a cup of neutral tasting oil and whisk the two together until the eggs are emulsified with the oil. This only takes a minute. Add two cups of sugar. I typically use either white or brown sugar and you can also reduce the sugar to one and a half cups if you prefer it less sweet. Add two cups of plain flour and there's no need to sift it for this recipe. One teaspoon of bicarb soda two heaped teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of vanilla essence and a half a teaspoon of salt. Stir well until the mixture comes together and it will be very thick. The final ingredient is apples. The recipe calls for four cups of peeled chopped apples but I almost always use a large tin of pie apples instead. They work wonderful in this cake. If you're going for the fresh apple option, I suggest adding another cup or two of apples, so five to six cups of chopped apples. And sometimes I even throw in a couple of peeled and chopped apples together with the pie apples. Grease and line a large cake tin or slice pan and pour in the mixture. Smooth out the top and it's ready to bake. Bake in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius, no fan, or 160 degrees Celsius with a fan for 50 to 65 minutes, depending on your oven. If it's browning too quickly, cover it with baking paper or aluminium foil for the last 15 minutes. And it's done when a skewer inserted in the center comes out clean. Once baked, let it cool in the tin for a while, then transfer it to a wire rack to cool completely. Now onto the caramel frosting. Start by placing a half a cup of butter in a smaller saucepan over a medium heat. Once it's nearly melted, add one cup of brown sugar, stir to dissolve, then bring it to a boil, stirring constantly for about two minutes. You'll notice it foaming up and looking a bit like honeycomb. Then carefully add a quarter of a cup of milk, stir it in well and bring it back to a boil. This will only take a moment. After that, remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. Once it's cool, transfer the caramel mixture to a bowl and gradually add two cups of icing sugar, a couple of big spoonfuls at a time, beating well after each addition. If you're using the lumpy kind of icing sugar, be sure to sift it first to get rid of any hard lumps. When your cake is completely cool, it will be super moist, so handle it gently. Place it on a serving dish and slather the caramel frosting on top. I like to use a knife dipped in hot water to help spread the frosting smoothly. I'm heavy handed, so there's probably too much frosting on this cake for most people. You can halve the recipe if you prefer a thinner layer or if you like me and love frosting, you can use this quantity for a thick layer of icing. And what I love about this cake is that you can keep it in the fridge because it is so moist and I like to cut it up and have it cold and serve it with some whipped cream. It is absolutely delicious. This cake keeps well in the fridge for up to six days and it freezes beautifully. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you make this cake. It's really delicious and super easy. Hopefully I'll see you again soon.